Welcome to AAT uh, Syllabus is Changing. Are you ready? My name is Gavin O'Mara. I'm the CEO and founder of FE News. And this is a totally co-produced live stream with our friends at the Skills Network and FE News to help us all get ready for the AAT Syllabus Changes. If you didn't know, um, September 22 is going to be a big date in, in anyone who's in the AAT um, the ecosystem that things are going to be changing. We're changing from AQ 2016 to Qualification 2022, better known as Q um, 2022. Um, and there's going to be quite a few changes in place. Today, what we're hoping to do is to just help come up with some solutions and ideas for everyone to be able to think about, to get themselves ready for the, the transition from the, 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 and the update to the syllabus and the reason why as well. I've got like a superstar guest set up. Um, I'm joined with um, uh, Mark Dore from the Skills Network. And um, Mark is, I don't know if you, a lot of people know Mark from when he's time at um, AELP and before that when he was a college principal, um, but it, Mark, had a background as being a, a, a chartered accountant from KPMG. He's got a, a, a master's in economics from, from Oxford. We've just got like the, a, a superstar lineup. We've got two experts from AAT. We've got Zoe and Helen. Zoe also is um, you know, a trained accountant and has run accountancy teams and has worked her way through you know, training and running um, you know, organisations and also teams within accountancy. So we've got a really, really great lineup. Mark, I wonder if you could join us in the studio. Hey Mark, how are you? Hi there, Gavin. Thank you. I almost turned off there. It's Cambridge and Oxford, and you just you can't get that one wrong. Oh my life, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was about the biggest mistake I could have done ever, isn't it? Really, but there you go. But you, oh, thank you for forgiving me. <laughs> um, Mark, I wonder if we could just sort of set the scene, really. So the syllabus is changing, as we just mentioned, but with all of that um, background that we touched upon there. Um, how do we um, prepare and what do we need to be thinking about? I'm thinking really lessons learned. So, yeah, you know, you've got your career in, in accountancy, you know, use a DFE, you run an awarding organisation. So you've been through this on the other side of the fence as well. You know, it's been the largest um, trade body for training providers in the UK. And now you're at the skills network with all of that sort of background. What are the lessons that we need to learn from the past? How do we prepare? What do we need to be thinking of to be able to look at this transition, really? Yeah, it's, it's a tricky one. As you said, I was a chartered accountant uh, as computers were starting to appear in business. And um, you know, my experience was photocopying and making number 17 coffee out of the coffee machine in a plastic cup. Um, so I suppose, you know, I've got a background in accounting. I, I loved it. I loved seeing into businesses and all of that. But I didn't want to be just stay as a pure accountant. I think the lessons learned, um, particularly obviously my time at OCR when we redid all the GCSEs and A-levels, um, it's a really tricky time for everyone. Now, A-levels, you normally get a couple of years to look at the curriculum and the assessment, then probably a year writing, getting approval, a year putting it out into the into the schools, and then a couple of years teaching. And the first assessment's actually six years after the process have begun wow. um, lots of preparation and even then it's incredibly challenging because the teachers have to learn understand the syllabus or the tutors or the lecturers in this case um, and that's challenging um, and it's sort of getting hold of all the new resources and how they're going to apply it um, it's new for the tutors and the learners so you don't have lots of past papers you don't have the understanding of how questions are going to be asked how the subjects interrelate within within it and generally you do see a dip in performance uh, not only overall and you can adjust for that through um, your marking scheme but different centres will perform in different ways compared to how they used to depending on how well the tutors in particular brought it up so it's, it's probably the biggest change for 20 years in, in AAT um, significant changes which we'll hear about and that's going to be really, really challenging. Then as a principal and CEO of an ITP, you know, every learner is different. We know that. Yeah. Um, and individualised learning is really important. But how do you do individualised learning with large groups, with limited funding? Um, and those learners have also got really busy lives. A lot of times the retention issues with learners, nothing to do with the learning. Is their lives so i think as we talk through the changes and how tech and uh, digital can support it 
those are some of the things I think we're going to reflect upon. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think you're absolutely right about, um, you know, it's trying to wrap this around um, people's real lives, isn't it? If you know what I mean? And and how that's also not just the learner, but the educator, the leader, and how we can sort of support everyone, really. Yeah. And I think what's interesting is, you know, the world of digital is is this seem to have sped up and increased, isn't it? You know, with the pandemic has really brought that to the fore in the, in the world of work. And I'm sure we're going to be touching on that in a minute with our friends at AAT. But I think it's just interesting that people's roles and the way work is has changed, isn't it? And the, also the way that people expect um, to have like education and those support services wrapped around their everyday lives is interesting as well. It's really, I think it's really exciting, but it's really sped up. It's exciting on the other side of things, but not if you've got to deliver it. <laughs> it's to yeah. be you've got to bring that together. Um, I wonder if I could bring in. Um, Zoe Smith from AAT, Helen Newson from AAT. I, I wanna... Hey Zoe, hey Helen, how are you? Hello, Kevin. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thanks. I mean, this is a really important session for a lot of people because we all want to be able to do well by the learner. We all want to be able to um, you know, do well by our, uh, our teams and also equip our leaders to better deliver that as well. I wonder, um, I've sort of gone, I'm normally a, I'm very unstructured. And sometimes I call myself a bit fizzy, but I thought we have accountancy we, we need to sort of have a bit of structure in here so i've sort of i'm experimenting and trying out some of these little headers and stuff like that. so the, i wanted to ask you guys the aat syllabus is changing um what are the changes to the syllabus and why um i'd wonder if you could um if i could pass it over to our experts at aat yeah sure thank you so um, our qualifications are, are always updated sort of every three to five years. We look at it just to make sure that they're relevant. They're providing the knowledge and skills and training that is needed to reflect the world of work and the, and the way that accountancy roles do change and also to make sure that we're future proofing our qualifications. So back in June 2019, we commissioned the Warwick Economics and Development Limited and Nottingham Trent University to carry out research on our behalf to look at four key areas of the impact of technology on the accounting professions, the changing role of uh, accountancy, the drivers for change, and also the skills for success in, in the future. So they carried out an online survey with over 530 different accounting professionals, businesses globally, to be able to sort of talk to them and ask them what their views are, what was needed, what were the impacts, what were the drivers, what were the changes. Uh, they carried out 15 interviews and then with, with key employers, and then they brought together four focus groups where they also um, in, included uh, software developers as well to be able to gauge their input um, and to answer this. And so out of that research that they did, some of the key highlights for that of the changes that they recommended we put into uh, the content of the qualification is about the fact that actually it's the changing in the role of a technician is is through the emerging technologies that we had coming through. So making things much more automated. And because tasks were going to be more automated, it meant that bookkeepers and accountants were probably going to have a bit more freed up time, less of the data input of the, the role that they'd be doing on a day to day base. And they would have more of a, a, a like an outward facing role where they would be advising clients or providing um, more of an analytical role to be able to share what that financial data meant to either internal customers or external clients um, and so they would be needing to provide that you know because we have real-time um, accounting you know cloud accounting they would be able to provide real-time advice on what was happening as far as sort of tax cash flows investments and helping clients to be able to make better decisions uh, about their businesses so they picked up three key skills that we needed to make sure that we were including the development of with the qualifications and they were analytical skills making sure that they could draw the insights out from the data that was there as well as problem solving and critical thinking uh, advisory skills so really that we needed to help develop the communication skills from both a written and verbal communication because that's really key in being able to provide that advisory um, service um, and also in the use of technology uh, so making sure that students understood while they have these great technology that does everything in a very automated way that they understood what the software was doing in the background um, and then other areas such as cyber security uh, data big data uh, and making tax digital so they were the key things that they had said we needed to add and include when updating the qualification yeah no that's that's really really interesting and that's a big survey group isn't it as well you know that's 
um, and, and bringing different details in. Helen, I wonder if I could bring you in just to explain. I know that there's four new things that are coming in with um, Q2022. Um, uh, technology, communications, ethics, sustainability. I wonder if you could explain in a you know, touch on them really is the, the reasons the reasons why because I think that's really interesting because the world of work has changed and that seems to match a lot of where things were pre-pandemic and now in this strange period of pandemic but like what does it mean for the future of of, of accounting you know and, and why why those four things absolutely so sort of touching obviously coming from the um the recommendations that the research um provided for us and and what Zoe was then sort of discussing there We've always had those areas within our qualifications in kind of different elements in different ways. You know, it's it's not new that we're talking to our students around communication, the ability to write about what the numbers mean and, and you know, the, the importance of ethics in within the world of an accountant and those sorts of things. But I think what we've done is obviously learning from that research and, and we've we've drawn on those areas, knowing that that is where the um, where the industry is going, where the role is going in the future. Um, so we've just given them a little bit more gravitas within within the, the qualifications um, and we've actually brought them in right at the beginning so obviously we have four different levels of qualification um, under the new syllabus under Q 2022 they're referred to as level one level two level three and level four um, and we're bringing in kind of a very high level introduction of each of those four elements those four kind of key business areas is the way we're talking about them key business themes they're being introduced at level one. So any any student studying one of our level one qualifications will get an understanding of what these four themes are and why they're important within a role. As they develop and go through the levels of the qualification, so into level two, level three, and onto the, the highest level we do at level four, the complexity and the development in which we bring those areas in increases. So sort of, you know, at level two, level three, it's about understanding them, understanding the impact they have within sort of the, the, the tasks, the roles that they might be doing. And then kind of as you get further into level four, it's very much that analytical approach um, and being able to, to sort of take those skills and that knowledge and that understanding and really apply it within everyday work, basically. Um, you know, it's, it's sustainability is huge. Everybody knows that you you can't turn on the radio or the TV with somebody talking about the impact on the environment. And, and you know, we Mark mentioned earlier about, you know, his role in, in accounting initially was, you know, photocopying bits of paper. And, and we, you know, everyone now is trying to move away from those sorts of things, you know, and clients, accountants, businesses have with the, the development of technology, they've moved into more, you know, sort of the, the online, the digital um cloud accounting so we are in a world now where we aren't necessarily an office full of paper and things like that that sort of coupled together with you know the the technology things and with the the change in how we work accountants we're not all sat in an office we're all sat obviously in very different locations you know we're not we're not in our offices today um and for the accountant to be able to support the client um, you know, they, they need to be able to see those those numbers straight straight away, you know, and, and as Zoe touched on, that sort of instant live ability to see that data because it's on cloud, because it's in a software, enables the accountants to then kind of move forward and, and take those analytical skills that they will learn as part of the kind of the development of the qualification alongside the core accountancy skills, just enriches their, their skill set, basically, and, and their ability within their role. Yeah, well, that sounds really, really interesting. So I think, um, like you said, the, the world of work is is changing. It's, you know, we're in the middle of uh, one of the biggest sort of disruptions um, to what the, the world of work is, well, for a very, very long time. Um, and I think it's it's interesting that you know, you're, you're sort of trying to, to match into what that could be and into the future. Um, Mark, you, you touched on a few things um, that I thought were really, really interesting. I think following on from what Zoe and Helen have both said around the, the four themes, um, how do we start to equip people to be able to unpack those those themes? Because there's there's a within the AAT, obviously there's the learner, there's the educator, there's leaders. Do you know what I mean, there's also employers as well. We, you know, we need to sort of you know support you know those four different subgroups really. And it's just like how do we um, you know be mindful of those those changes coming in, and what do we need to do to drive that forward to sort of showcase? The reasons why the future of, of work is changing why these things are there so mark i didn't know if you wanted to sort of unpack it at all really yeah i mean those four themes it's no surprise is it i mean they're they're right up there 
in our in our lives and in our working lives so um and a lot of accountancy is about reflecting a business you know uh, it's looking at the business whether you're an auditor or an accountant within the business and those are becoming key factors you know, the, the sort of sustainability audit and all of those things and ethics and corporate social responsibility i think it's really interesting just hearing zoe and helen talk you're seeing the skills requirements being pushed down the levels because actually those jobs of photocopying and making coffees for the partner have gone. Um, you don't, you know, don't have to use a machine anymore. We can go to Costa. They didn't, Costa didn't exist in my day. Um, so it's, it's, it's actually more challenging in some ways, but I think vastly more interesting. Um, but you're, you're coming in, my my year of photocopying and doing the sort of the bank rec and stuff like that gave me a very very base understanding that I could build on. We're not we're not going to have it in quite that way in the future. So the learning and applying this, and if you think um, uh, communication again, obviously really important. Um, as, as an, a young accountant, uh, used to have to go into a manager review and a partner review. Um, you know, one partner was famous for throwing files out the window if he didn't like what was in there. And, and you had to learn to communicate and explain what you were doing. You had to learn to communicate with the, um, in, in my case as an auditor, with the, the client and, and ask the right questions in the right way to get, you know, you're probing around and then you're running a team as well. So um, probably no different to many other jobs. In terms of tech, Again, you know, when I joined KPMG, they were just getting Apple Macs in for the first time. Um, and I'd, I'd had the benefit of um, a bit sad. I started working for an accountant when I was 14 um, and he got super cow, the first spreadsheet. And I learned that. So when I went to KPMG, I started using that. I was sort of the only one in a way. Now, you know, you can't do the job without a full understanding of the tech. So really important stuff really important it's all blended into the learning but i think will be a, a new challenge for the for the the accountancy firms for the employers and obviously therefore for the individuals who want to enter the profession and and those that are teaching them it's a very different mindset that the teachers the lecturers um won't have experienced some of this stuff practically in the same way so getting them to understand what's important, how to convey it to the learners, learners that have probably got better tech abilities than they have. Um, so, you know, that's that's an issue in teaching all the time, I think, is the learners often have far more advanced understanding. Um, so, so, yeah, I think uh, really important changes, but also a real challenge to, to, to everyone to make sure it works. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it's interesting, you know, um, I wasn't a, a, an accountant, but I've always been on the other side and I've had to deal with accountants. I remember my dad being, you know, self-employed and bringing, helping him separate his receipts, do you know what I mean? Like a table full of receipts and sort of just <laughs> delivering to like magically to some man who would then just sort of literally tip him on a table. So what was that about? Um, through to me now, I probably, if my accountants are listening in, they'll be thinking, oh, my life. Um, I, I have to get them to explain stuff to me constantly as to what does that mean then and how do we sort of make sure um, we're delivering this. So I think it's really interesting about the ethics side of things because before you know, the, the pandemic, there was all sorts of areas around how do we make sure that we're being ethical with with what we're doing with, with tax in, in particular. But like you're saying, I 100 percent agree, you know, that there's how many you know before there was you know there wasn't adverts on the tv about like quickbooks and sage and things like that. well you know you can go to cinema and 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 see stuff. i just think it's really really interesting sustainability like you said is, is key for for everyone everywhere and i think it sort of segues into what i wanted to cover next but before i get there um i want all of you wants to know this is live you know you can um do any comment that you want to as long as it's relevant um then we will ask the team to come through so we've um We've had uh, Ollie just come and just give us a quick uh, a quick hi. So everyone, you know, if you want to be able to put a question to to our panel, they'll be more than happy um, to, uh, to to answer that. And if 
it goes really, really technical. We've got a legacy article that's going to be going live after this where we can ask uh, an expert uh, in that area to be able to answer that for you as best we can. So sort of, um, if you want to ask anything, please do. And I'll try to bring that in and have time for, for the panel to be able to answer different things. My next area that I really wanted to cover was what Mark was touching on there really is, um, is transition really. Um, and how do we, um, how do we support learners, educators, leaders, providers, and employers with what is sometimes change can be, I think it all goes in the communication piece that we're talking about, the themes there really, isn't it? Is um, sometimes yeah, change can be frightening to people, other times other people really embrace it and get really excited. How can we um, help with, with transition? So I think there's a couple of different things. Mark, you touched on when you were at OCR, just the length of time that qualification change happened there and i think that's really interesting i think did you say seven years that's like a that's a really long time isn't it to, to be able to do this and i think um i think that's interesting you also mentioned things around educator acceptance and also sometimes you can get a dip um in success rate so we've got september coming you know around quite quick how can we sort of get ahead of that johnny what do we need to do to better help and equip all of our learners educators and and leaders to better get ahead on those type of things. Um, Mark, um, you know, yeah. this coming from a qualification sort of background review, what do you think we need to be thinking about for educator acceptance, for example, um, yeah. and sort of looking at things around uh, dips in success rates and stuff like that? So, you know, I think Zoe and uh, Helen will have some, some sort of cool detail around this and the support for the tutors. I mean, that's the most important thing is, is those tutors are the connection to the, the the individuals we're going to have to explain to the employers why the programs are changing and the requirement especially as an apprenticeship the off on the job as well as the off the job and linking it in um you know some of the units now are big beasts of a unit and and really challenging it's explaining to the tutors how to deliver it um we're going to talk about digital later but you know the resources to support um uh, my big thing around digital is it, you can have world-class resources available to everyone. Um, so making sure those resources are there, making sure the tutors are supported, giving them plenty of lead time. You know, this is the run in now. So time to get their heads around it. Um, again, in the old days, um, uh, lecturers and tutors would be creating their own slides and things ready for the class and, you know, Often in the first year, as long as they were a day ahead of their class, they they felt comfortable. But we, we're in a position now where we can we can support more. But if if that isn't right, if the if the past papers or, or example questions aren't that available and understood, then um, you have a real problem because people aren't properly prepared. Um, they're not learning the right things. So when they come to the assessment, um, they're not not equipped to answer the questions and the questions always will have a style of of how they're asked um exact there's nothing wrong with exam technique there's nothing wrong with teaching to the test in the sense that you need to understand how you're going to be asked something and how to convey something and those are some of the things that in the early years always are not as good as once something stable and it's trying to get everyone up to a good enough level early on uh, and i'm sure aat have got a way of sort of balancing that out in the early years um as people are getting used to how things are done yeah no definitely uh, uh sorry helen i wonder if i could ask you i mean there's always going to be that cohort of learners that are moving from one um qual to, to the other and that's a massive part of transition isn't it really? so um could, maybe if you could explain like the plans around um those learners which are on AQ 2016 that are then going to move to qualification 2022 or Q 2022. Um, what's the plan around supporting those learners, but also supporting the educators that are supporting those learners, if you know what I mean? What's the, what's the plan in, in place? I know you've got one. Uh, we, um, as you sort of touched on earlier on, a lot of this is all about communication and it's about helping them and understanding them and, and giving them time as well. We've actually been talking to the providers, the educators um, since 2019 about this um, and students a little bit after there. Obviously, there's there's been sort of 
elongations in some of the time periods around the delivery of the qualification. But we've we've spent a good 18 months to two years actually really helping the educators and the students to understand what that transition period will look like because there is about a year um, from when we go live with Q2022 on the 1st of September until we finally withdraw the the AQ16 qualifications and students are no longer able to sit those assessments at the end of September 2023. Um, and we've been talking to them both on, on either side and also actually to the employers. Um, and Mark touched on a really good point there about the apprenticeships. And I'll, I'll come back to that shortly. But um, there's there's lots that we've been doing with, with both the educators and the, and the students um, in terms of really mapping out in a very clear and defined way what that journey will look like. So if you are a student that is currently studying an AQ 2016 qualification um, and you are considering transitioning across to the, the Q22 equivalent qualification, what does that mean in terms of the assessments you've already sat? What does that mean in terms of the grades that you've got? Um, you know, and what's the cost? You know, cost is a big thing in the world today. We all know, you know, it's not getting cheaper anywhere to live anywhere and everything costs more than it ever did. Um, you know, and so what are the cost implications around all of that? Um, one of the other things that AAT are doing as part of this transitional change is actually changing how membership works. And, and at the moment, students pay an annual membership fee. As we go into um, and launch qualifications 2022, that changes and students will actually pay basically what is a, a product purchase. They will, will buy access to the new qualification for its lifetime which is typically four to five years. Um, so there isn't a, a, an annual renewal fee, but so they need to take those sorts of things into consideration. We've introduced a transition fee, which is slightly different um, for those that are transferring across because it takes account and consideration of the fact that they will have had an active student membership that they will have paid for. And so we're, you know, we're trying to support them in, in that aspect as well so that they're not financially implicated um, if they decide to make that transition. We've got um, interactive tools on the website, for example, that enable students um, and, and educators. It's there for both to use whereby they can go in and and physically um, select the qualification they're on the units they've sat that they've achieved and it will tell them does that transfer across yes which one does it, which unit is that applicable to in the equivalent qualifications 2022 um, syllabus so they can see a real clear indication of okay if I wish to make that transfer what does it actually mean to me? Will I have to sit extra units? Will I have to study something different? Um, you know, so all of those sorts of different things, as I say, we it's all there for the educators as well. There's other support documentation for the educators that goes into a bit more detail and a bit more depth that they need to be aware of. Um, and all of those resources we've been sharing and promoting and, and talking about with, with all the different audience groups and including employers, because we know it's a big thing for our employer market as well. They've got, um, especially around, as I say, the apprenticeship area, um, as we go into Q qualifications 2022, there is going to be this weird sort of um, transition period in the middle where if you've got student apprentices that are studying the new qualification, they're actually going to be sitting um, at level three and level four. The synoptic assessment that we currently have on AQ2016, that will still make up the end point, part of the R end point assessment. So those apprentices are going to sort of straddle the two syllabuses so we're working with um, employers to help them understand what that means and obviously with educators as well so that there's sort of not a um, not a gap in the students learning between the two syllabuses because obviously they're going to be learning Q2022 assisting an assessment for part of it on AQ16 for part of their EPA. Um, so as I say, we, we've been doing lots about this. We continue to, we, we, we won't stop. September still in our terms a long way off. I say that very loosely because <laughs> <laughs> we're almost in July. Um, but week on week, we, we are delivering content, whether it's in our newsletters, whether it's um, in live events. We've just got through a period of um, 
face to face. Uh, we've done face to face conference networking sessions recently, which has been amazing to see the educators again in real life, where we focus very specifically on everything around Q2022. And we talk them through the processes and the transitions and what it means for everybody involved. And as I say, we've still got lots more time between now and the 1st of September. And it won't stop. This, this We don't just get to the 1st of September and everything stops. We know that throughout that next year, basically, we will continue to support those students. Um, there'll be periods of time where you might have a student on AQ16 and actually their educators decided that they're no longer going to deliver AQ2016 because, of you know, we know there's limiting resources or somebody that's lapsed as a student and wishes to come back and finish that off. So we're going to be working with those students as well to make sure that they can find a provider that will enable them to finish their qualification and, and not necessarily um, transition if they don't want to, but also if they want to transition, then we can help them with all of those aspects as well. Um, you touched on, and, and I'll let Zoe cover this bit off maybe around that transition of the teaching change, because some of the units are are combined. Some of that content is a lot bigger and, and that transition from, from teaching those elements kind of um, is very different for, for the educators, but that's that's Zoe's remit. So I'll let her talk to you about that. Yeah. I mean, I thought I was actually naturally asked about it. So it's, it's, um, and it's interesting you said about the apprenticeship um, sort of things about people, yeah. you know, stepping into, into gateway and, and stuff like that, and then like straddling between the, the two. How do we support the apprentice, support the employer, but also support the um the educators do you know what i mean is, is it, that, it, it's, it's, struggle, it's it? a balance it's definitely a balance i think for this for this transitional period so that that kind of straddle of the syllabuses will be up until september 2023 um right. by which point um hopefully they'll you know the the epa elements will have adapted we know there's work going on in the background already kind of um with with sort of focus groups and things but there is that that time period where you will have apprentices studying qualifications 2022 as part of their on-programme learning that will have to sit an EPA under the current synoptic assessments at, at AQ 2016. Um, but we've, we've done lots of mapping exercises. We're working, you know, very, very tightly with our employers, with, you know, those that are kind of really big apprenticeship employers and with the providers as well and the educators so that they they can really support those those apprenticeship students through that, that sort of transition period. Um, as I say, the qualification has developed. There are areas that are different uh, and, you know, there, there are kind of things that will need to be touched on in addition to that. Um, and that's where we're really working closely with those those educators and, and we'll support the students as best as we possibly can so that they're not impacted by straddling two syllabuses. Gavin, I mean, on the transition, which is a really important point, and, you know, we've we've spent a long time and a, a, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds creating resources. And <clears throat> my first question was, well, can't we just take the old resources and tweak them? It wasn't like that at all. It is it is a lot of new stuff. Not And even the subjects are the same. It's a different approach to them. So that transition, I mean, for, for our learners, our current learners, we're, we're transitioning them for free onto the new resources if that's what they want um, and obviously we're releasing these resources and that they, they are there's a lot there there's it's taken a lot of work and we've also we work with first intuition who, who are sort of a big provider to make sure that their approach to teaching and the understanding of the subject comes through in the resources and I think first intuition doing a lot of tutor support as well so there are a lot of organizations you know not only are we creating those resources the initial assessment to determine where people are at and all of that but um that transition phase and supporting tutors um really really important is i don't think we can emphasize enough can we that it's it this is a big change this is not like a an update this is yeah. major shift yeah. and and the understanding i mean i was reading through all the bits and it, to me, it's much more exciting. It's much more sort of straddling the economics and accountancy. It's understanding the business, understanding how they are in the world. Because ultimately, when you're a partner of an accountancy firm, you, you look at the figures and make sure they all add up, you know, debits and credits and all that stuff. But then you're stepping back and saying, you know, does this really reflect the business in the world they're working in? Are they providing for the right things? Um, they've got dodgy dodgy asset valuations you know their cryptocurrencies 
um, investments, where are they at today? And you need to know that world, wider world to be a good accountant. And that's that's what's being started right at level one, level two now, which is a big shift. It's a, yeah. um, Mark, what Mark touches on there about resource and support resources. Um, our learning services team have spent the last three years developing a complete new suite of qualification support, basically. So for all of the new qualifications that are being launched, there is hundreds of pieces of resource now that all brand new, all rebuilt entirely specifically for this this assessment, these qualifications. Um, and also to reflect, um, obviously we touched on earlier things like practice assessments um, so that they can get familiar with what those assessments look like to, to make it even more complicated um, and, and to make it even bigger come the 1st of September. We're not just changing the syllabus and the qualification, but we're changing the assessment platform too, because you know, we don't do things by half AAT. Um, so, you know, uh, providers, educators, students have, have also got to get familiar potentially if they're transitioning with a different style assessment platform. Um, the, we, we're moving to um, uh, Atlas Cloud uh, that we, we've partnered with an organisation for um, and it, it gives students a different learning environment, a different assessment platform, basically a different environment for them to sit those assessments in, um, which is great. There's much more functionality. It's a so that you know it's, it's an enhanced user experience and those sort of things. But it is another thing that if a student is transitioning, they will have been used to our previous platform, and so there's this new platform they've got to get used to. So even for that, we've been doing demo videos, walkthroughs, presentations. Um, things, different sort of visualized and demonstration videos so that they can really start to get to grips with that. So so come that day, they sit their first assessment. If they've transitioned into Q2022, they're not daunted by a suddenly completely different environment. The practice assessments have all been built under the new platform as well. So it really helps with that period of transition for, for students completely. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Sorry, did you want to add anything about, um, yeah, Educators, and um, I want to ask everyone a little bit about educator acceptance because um, that also then relays, I think, to you know, the dips potentially in in success rates and stuff. Because people have got to get their head around what they're doing, don't they? You know, and it sounds like there's loads of plans in place to, and loads of resources there. But um, I know that Helen was sort of mentioning you had some things you wouldn't mind covering on on educators as well. Uh, yeah, so we have done a lot of training provider conferences. I think Helen was talking about that. We have um, a weekly newsletter that goes out and provides lots of updates and suggestions in there. We've had different um, guest speakers come in and, and demonstrate how what they've done. We've also had a pilot that's, that's been running that's already started on uh, Quals 2022. And so the experience that they've had, um, they've been able to share that experience too about what they've done, the resources that they've used, um, how the assessment platform has worked. So that that's a kind of an opportunity for our training providers to have a little bit of an insight as to how things are running already. So I think that pilot has been really key. And it's just about making sure that, you know, the, the significant changes that have come in, what we've done, uh, why we've done it, but then also what resources are available for them. And uh, we have a dedicated Quals 22 page. It's got lots of resources, webinars that we've run previously. Um, we've got podcasts. There are um, lots of articles on comment as well that we've done for employers and for students. So they're aware of what's taking place. And when it comes to the support that we've given to employers, we've got a dedicated employer team and they've been working with employers to make sure they're aware of the updates for the past sort of 18 months. Um, They've been we've, we've run um, online lunch and learn sessions for um, managers who are overseeing the apprentices and looking after those uh, trainees as well so that they're aware of what the training is going to be, what it's going to look like, where they're designing their training programs for their employees, what levels it's going to come in at. Because with the significant changes that we've made, actually, it's about looking to see what the starting point might be for some of those employers, where they're going to bring those trainees in. And there's probably more significance, particularly with the experience of COVID and the impact that that's had on people doing their GCSEs or A-levels or the inability to be able to have as much work experience because of the restrictions that we've seen over the last few years, that probably there's more emphasis on starting students through on the level two apprenticeship and working their way through to be able to help build, develop those skills and, the, and just the, the social skills and the work ethics as well that they need, that extra support. So working with 
training providers when they've been doing employer forums uh, to be able to help employers to see about what that starting point might be, what that journey might look like. Um, and we actually, we've got another webinar for employers next week. Actually, I'm gonna plug that now. So uh, it, um, to be able to help them, that's all about get prepared for the launch of Quals 2022 that's taking place to be able to help employers. We have bite-sized videos that takes them through the th themes, how employers will benefit from the new themes that's being introduced earlier and woven all the way through and what that relevance is for businesses and what that looks like. Um, and as Helen said, we've got more activities planned for later on in the year. We've got another webinar for employers back in and um, forward. Uh, in the autumn time, just going through that transitional arrangement for, for students that they've currently got apprentices both on AQ16 and, and are going to transfer them over. So what that looks like, how we can support them, how we can help them. So we do feel that we've got a lot of different areas. Um, and if any training providers or students or employers have got any queries or questions, we do have dedicated contact numbers um, on the areas of the, the AT website as well to, to come in and to contact us if they need any support. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. Mark, I wonder if I could ask you something. You know, um, your previous role, you dealt with, you know, mainly leaders in, in training providers and all of the pressures and understandings that they got in, in their different different roles. Um, you touched on something quite interesting, where how do we support leaders of providers so as they can equip their team so that, that they don't have a similar idea that you did, that, oh, can we just re, repurpose some of the stuff we had before? But how do we also equip Touching on what Zoe and, and Helen have said as well, yeah, there's sales teams. How do we enable um, leaders to equip their sales teams to be able to explain to employers these are the cool things that are happening here and how we equip it? Um, I mean, what what sort of um, things do we need to be thinking about on how we can equip leaders to equip their teams? They led the the delivery staff are led by the leader, aren't they? Around what what sort of happens? I'd, I'd be really interested because you've got unique insight into that. I'd be quite keen to see how we can. Uh, equip leaders and what resources could there be to better help them be able to um, understand you know, the, these changes? Because some providers won't just be doing AAT, they'll be doing other quality as well. You yeah. know, what, what sort of thing can they do? I mean, unique insight to leaders is quite a, a, a challenge. Um, <laughs> but I suppose it, the real challenge is I, don't, I think a lot of leaders won't even know. I mean, AAT is just one course of many um and sort of this all this that we're doing around trying to raise the awareness i think um it'll be really challenging getting good tutors getting good tutors anyway is hard in the accountancy world and this is going to make it even harder um so how how do we help them guide them through this transition I think that's why, you know, that's why I love online learning so much is you can take away a whole chunk of, of, of tutor need um, and do it really well online, uh, still blended where necessary. And that what that allows is then the tutor to focus on that individualized support. So it, for me, online actually allows a much more individualized approach. That seems slightly counterintuitive if you're putting everyone through on the same online learning, but even in online learning can have stretch and challenge and different different approaches. But what it does is it frees up that really expensive resource, which is the teacher to, to focus on the bits the learners don't get or add value around it or context, context into the local situation, whether it's a local employer, the local area, the local sector. Um, but we, I don't think if you went out and asked a bunch of college principals and providers, um, is, is there anything strange happening in the accountancy world at the moment, accountancy training? I don't think you get a massive high percentage saying, oh, yeah, AC is changing and it's biggest change in 20 years and I've got to really prepare. And that's the real fear here is, is making sure those departments are supported. So part of the reason for doing this is to say, look, we've done things to support. There are ways we can support through AAT, through the Skills Network resource, through, you know, with, with First Intuition, it's not only online. Bizarrely, accountants seem to like paper still. So, um, you know, not only an online resource, we're doing the same, same resource in print and doing books as well. Um, so it's making sure all of that's there, but then making sure people have the sort of understanding to, to bring it forward. And, yeah. and if, 
if you don't mind me adding to that, so as the awarding organisation, we have contacts, contacted SMT, we've sent communications out to them to make them aware of the changes that are coming. Um, so that's gone out to principals, vice principals, directors of FB colleges and independent training providers. So they do know what's coming. They, they may not have read it, but, but it has been yeah. sent. Um, <laughs> and also through the, the regional, we, we have a team of regional account managers So we, we, in the team that I work within. And so what we've been doing is, is supporting our SMTs to be able to have an, a high level overview of the changes that are coming and making them appreciate actually the additional time that potentially they're gonna need to make sure that their delivery teams have in order to prepare for this. Um, talking to them about as you know as with the skills network the different blended options that are out there that there are third parties that can support them with providing that blended learning opportunity that also are as the skills network are doing providing that additional training for tutors so they're aware of what's changing what the how to put the curriculum together. You know, these platforms have, have done so much work in creating all of the resources for the for the Quals 2022. So that actually by partnering with them, SMTs can look at that, explore that to see if that's a way to be able to transition them into the new qualification that we have because the, of the support and help that they would be receiving through those partnerships. And again, I think as Mark mentioned about the fact that finding tutors we know is difficult. Um, and this could be that additional challenge. So we've been running a, a grow our own grow your own campaign uh, which is about trying to encourage or reminding tutors about the great resource that they can sometimes have already within their, their students that they have. You can identify people who could potentially be somebody that you could bring in who is a really strong tutor that has that ability to be able to explain and to talk through concepts and support colleague you know their, their peers within the group that they could potentially be somebody that might want to take their AT qualification move into a role as as a tutor to be able to support so you can then develop them internally to be able to help with you know meeting that needs of, of recruitment as a tutor uh, and also we've been sending out campaigns to our members so our AT members uh, talking about the benefits and and the uh the opportunities that there are of also supporting as being maybe a part-time lecturer or an associate lecturer of FN to try and help fill that gap. So SMTs within providers have got additional options to look at when they're looking at bringing on new tutors. So as an awarding organisation, we're trying to raise awareness across lots of different platforms to support. Yeah. It's That's funny, really isn't it? I, when, um, when the maths GCSE came out, I, I made a similar comment that it's much harder you know it's going to be really hard and i got on the front page of the times and ended up on the today program and being told off by ofqual i'm not convinced that by saying aat is going to be harder we're going to get the same exposure but um you know it is the same issue though that um people need to be prepared for for quite a change yeah no, definitely and i think it's interesting as well that you, you're covering like recruitment because AOC, um, AELP have all brought out reports recently around you know, the, the struggles that, that the sector is having in recruiting you know, high quality staff. It sort of covers this thing around you know, um, dips in success rate. This is all the changes are there to make sure that the qualification is robust and it's matching the, the business needs of, a, of the business world and uh, accountancy and bookkeeping which supports the business world. Because like Mark, you touched on cryptocurrency, you know, and, and stuff like that, which is obviously in the press again at the moment and stuff with, you know, it's got Bitcoin, it's in it tank, you know, and then it's sort of going for all sorts of stuff at the moment. But like, then what does that mean for, you know, the professionalization, that dual professionalism that we're talking around, you know, like educators around having one foot in the world of, of um, you know, a business support industry and also into the world of, um, of, of education and skills. I just think it's really interesting around, um, there's there's lots of different ways that we're trying to, to see that, um, the transition period but also there not be a, a dip in success rates whilst at the same mm -hmm. time it's sort of a a, a bit of a, a kick in the teeth if you're increasing quality whilst getting a dip you know and i think it's great that um yeah there's, there's obviously plans in in place to do that i'm really keen to talk about digital because in in one way talking about things like where the world of work has changed um the way that most people are accessing this rather than having to go to a conference center is you know is through digital um you know mark is talking about you know digital currency, which is transforming what, what people are talking about with um, with assets and stuff like that in, in the future. I think that the world of, of learning is really interesting with what we're doing with digital. And Mark, you touched on something really interesting around, if we're looking at, we've got a problem with recruiting and retaining really good educators, but if we can take a lot of that, you know, sort of 
leg work out of, of people not in the olden days completing their assets and it goes on the overhead projector and it sort of keeps with them. I must not share this. This is mine type of thing and around intellectual property around that type of thing. It's interesting with the world of, of digital, the way this could help with transition as well. Um, I don't know if anyone, Mark, maybe if you wanted to, to sort of touch on on digital, what that could mean for assisting the transition really and assisting the professionalization and the continual change and helping leaders as well. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's not, nothing's a magic bullet, yeah. but it helps, you know. It's transformational. And, you know, I've, I've been in sort of tech in education for a long time and, um, you know, the, the networks, the internet and all of that wasn't there properly. The devices weren't there. The applications weren't there. The content wasn't there. All of that's changed. And, um, you know, it costs a lot up front to create this stuff. But once it's created, it's there for everyone forever. Um, I do joke about the cocktail between Heineken and Martini. So uh, you know, Heineken ad was... Uh, uh, reaches the uh, reaches the learners other providers don't reach and martini anytime any place anywhere but it's sort of you know the digital um, it, it we all have busy lives a lot of our learners on other other courses as well as AAT would not walk into a classroom because they've got busy lives shift work it just doesn't work for them so for them it gives them access it's actually digital inclusion rather than exclusion but also for those that are in the classroom, the ability to have that resource available, they can sit away from the rest of the class if they don't understand something, go through it time, time again, no shame, no shaming there, sort of by just taking their time, others can accelerate through. As a leader, I mean, if I, as a college principal, if I'd been able to press a button and see where every single one of my learners had got up to, how much time they'd spent on something, what day they last did it, um, how they were all performing against each other, how my tutors were performing, how the units were performing. You know, that is a phenomenal amount of information. And at the Skills Network, we have that as a press of a button on our analytics of for every learner, 30,000 learners that we have going through. So digital, uh, the initial assessments and, and being able to, to put someone through um, diagnostics so they, we can understand um, what they do and don't know. You can do the English, the maths, the cognitive ability as well alongside that to see, well, actually their English skills, their literacy skills are a bit lower. And, you know, even with a maths based, well, accountancy isn't really maths based anyway, it's an art rather than a science. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, being able to understand actually they're going to be quite weak in some of these literacy areas. Um, so they're going to need some support. It, it just is transformational. Now, it takes a shift in mindset for both the tutors and the learners. Um, and you, your thing about hugging the acetate, I mean, uh, I think education traditionally has been appalling at sharing, absolutely appalling. Uh, here's the chance that actually to share things at a fraction of the cost it would be to create themselves, but then to free up their time. I think it professionalizes tutors and lecturers even more because then they're not doing the grind of teaching through a textbook type of thing that's been taken care of for them. Um, World class examples, guest speakers online, and then they they can do the stuff that really matters about that understanding of learner and how they're progressing, the stretch, the challenge, the support where they're dropping behind. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. I think, and also like that whole idea of bringing in a guest lecturer is very interesting. If you could, you know, it's tailoring as well, isn't it? Around, you know, everyone's an individual. And I think there was a, um, I think it's a report I wrote yesterday or today, um, which was around um, looking at, they called it, I think the title of it was like TikTok generation expects a Netflix experience. And I think it's that whole thing around, you know, we're all um, expecting like, you know, digital first sort of experience and it'd be seamless. And, I've noticed with um, our recent uh, apprentices, um, if we're looking at your more younger learners as well, and people entering into accountancy, they went for a pandemic of, of having to be remote. You know, so most of the stuff they did wasn't in a classroom. It was all, you know, it was digital. It was all sort of, they were like transitioning. And they're like, well, why do I need to go into a classroom like all the time? I want to be able to have this wrapped around me whenever I want to be able to do it. And I also want to be able to bolt on different bits that are of interest to me, you know, and, and bits which are like, you know, each one of you, each one of us here has had a different career from what we originally thought we were probably going to start out in. And I think it's just sort of really interesting as to 
the the opportunity for digital. And I, I yeah, didn't I mean, know some of those some of those experiences online were really bad. Uh, totally. And and you know, and we were all discussing beforehand our variety of ages of children, and and it was not good for a lot of them. And one of the things we have to do is explain what good online learning is and also blended and when no one's saying take away the classroom different different things for different people um but really good we we i have sort of e-learning scientists um uh fascinating roles they understand the pedagogy that you know they're applying what the regulators ofsted and ofqual you know that intent implement impact all our resources developed on the back of that understanding all our resources developed on what offqual will require through the assessment and supporting that um, that's complex and it is not a set of powerpoints with someone talking over them um, that's been rattled out the day before which we saw a lot of during the pandemic so we we actually have to re-educate people on what online is because i think if you said to a lot of them oh we're going online for a week again they go no I mean, my kids didn't care because they just played games instead of um, doing the actual learning. But, you know, some of them were diligent. Um, I think, but yeah, so there's there's quite a lot of challenge there, I think. I think one of the one of the one of the key things or one of the, the nice things as well in terms of that sort of digital and, and digital and differences for different people um, quite hot off the press. So last week we were actually able to announce um, that for qualifications 2022 like how we have been able to for some of the aq16 qualifications assessments are going to be available via remote invigilation which is a big move to digital as well obviously previously students learners have had to go into the classroom and um, they've had to go to an assessment center to sit those assessments um you know and obviously covid completely changed that and we as a business had to change and we had to look at ways students could still sit those assessments without physically being in a classroom or or you know or an assessment venue somewhere um but we we've committed to continuing that development of remote invigilation and, and as a business you know making sure that that service and, and that option if students want that is going to be available for all of the qualifications for all of the units assess of the um as we as we go into to qualifications 2022 it's not going to be straight away um we've got a lot of work to do to get the qualifications ready for that um but from september 2020 that opportunity as we roll out and, and close down to AQ16 remote invigilation will be available so that world of digital and and sort of you know just continuing to extend what digital means within a learning environment and the wider world um, has, has really impacted on you know how how our assessments can be set in the future as well. Yeah no that's very cool I mean but I, I did um from Qual, but I did um, agile project management course over the pandemic period, and like the, the proctoring process was interesting. Do you know what I mean? Like spinning my laptop around the room, do you know what I mean? Over my shoulder, and that. <laughs> and it's, like, it's, it's very cool. I just think it's you know, we, we need to better adapt and embrace and better to move that forward. I think you, we need you the are. so many different questions I want to ask you. It's like it, um, uh, Mark, you, you sound like you've got to dis. Um, I, was just asking, I was going to ask whether you actually passed. Uh, oh, yeah, no worries about that. I'm very, very, <laughs> Um, so the other important thing that that we push very hard is you know we create this resource with professionals of good understanding but when someone takes our resource and our system they get all the authoring tools as well and they can actually add to our existing resource they can bespoke it um, and that goes back to again accountancy cuts across all sorts of different environments different levels you know big KPMGs versus small local firms, accounting and construction versus um, hairdressing. And, you know, it, it's it's all very different. And you 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 to be able to contextualize for the students in your room and add things in. But again, it's giving you a base that you can build on. Uh, and that that's to me what's so important is that core, but then being able to contextualize as well. Yeah, 100 percent. And it's sort of um, like you said, you know, if you're looking at say construction and someone's looking at, you know, maybe starting off and looking at bookkeeping and stuff like this, is then how you could then help them like, oh, okay, you can transition into this and how you can help people with career progression. And I think it's you know, other areas around like user experience and you know, digital by design, you know, over the pandemic period, some of those awful experiences was because that wasn't designed <laughs> to be used on like a phone on the bus or or something. Do you know what I mean? It's just like 
um, and particularly when everyone was at home using the same data points, it was it was difficult for people. We did um, we did a, we did yes, a generation we did a generational divide report looking at the different generations and you know uh, very different approaches to learning, but the the probably the most common was they didn't want to be in a classroom and they wanted to use a laptop you know if you took everything together um so different approaches different lengths of learning for each generation but there is a common thought theme running through as well they actually do want to do it and and away from from the classroom yeah i think i, I just think it's really interesting of, of where we're at with this stage really of of learning of work and I just want to say thank you, everyone, for, for yeah, taking time out today to be able to help people be be ready. Um, I wonder if I could just ask one thing. We're going to go over by a minute or two by me doing this, but um, I'm thinking if you used to share one one point, one tip to help people be ready, be that a learner, be that an educator, be that a leader, what would that one point you'd want to share be? Um, Helen, what would you want to share around how to, because it's all about how um, are you ready? How would we, what's your one tip to be able to help people be ready? I think mine would be, and I'm going to plug the website, so aat.org.uk forward slash Q2022. That is the one place for all of our providers. Anybody that is an AAT approved training provider has pages of information. There's resources, there's documents, there's guidance, there's support. It's all there. The only thing we can say is they need to go and read it. They need to take the time to really prepare to digest the information and then to talk to their regional account managers, talk to Zoe, talk to the rest of the team. Um, invest the time now so that you're ready for september that's cool mark how about yourself yeah i mean as as an ex awarding body chief 100 percent agree with that understand the, the curriculum assessment um to me if you've got time get hold of the resource that you're going to use you know ideally ours and if you've got time do some of it understand you know understand what what the messaging is, how it's changed, because there's nothing like experiencing it to get a feel for what you're going to have to be doing. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Zoe, any one tip you'd want to give? Yeah, much the same has already been said, but I think that once they actually get into the delivery of it, making sure that they've built in times within their delivery plans to review, regularly checking and reviewing, because when you're teaching something for the first time, you do need to think, actually, do I need to adapt? What could I add in next time? What do we now need to look at? So opportunities for consolidating learning, checks on learning all the way through so that they can just make sure that they're kind of tweaking it and refining it as they go through when they're delivering something for the first time. So they have the best chance of being able to support those students for a successful outcome when they sit the assessment yeah no that's really cool at time I've, I've gone over and, and thank you everyone for, for, your, for your time today mark thank you helen zoe it's been really really helpful i think an audience i hope you've really um, found that a, a helpful um hour this has totally been co-produced between the skills network and, and fe news so it is um, credit where credit is due. Eleanor has, has worked her socks off to, to co-produce this. And Eleanor, thank you for all the hard work that you've put in. Leo in Team FE News and Finley, thank you so much for all the help you've done in the background as well. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I've, hopefully it's dispelled any fears and that you know where to go to resources for the Skills Network, also AAT. The, you know, they want to better support and make these fundamental changes there's a good reason for it, of it sort of changing the world of work. So I hope that, that leaders, educators, and if any learners are looking as well and employers, that we will be able to be there to better support you. And thank you for joining us today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.